welcome to the channel. If you're new here, thanks for stopping in. Everybody else too, thank you for stopping in. But the reason why I'm making this video is because I decided I wanted to share my reason why I started this channel. And a lot of it will go back into some of like the stuff that happened during the pandemic and the job that I had. So this video, hands down, we'll get right into it. I don't even want to kill time because this video is going to be the five reasons I quit working customer service. Let's get into it. Whew. Guys, so I don't know. But if you're like me, I feel that I genuinely do my best to be nice to people. So if someone's calling me, don't call me with no trouble. Okay. And working customer service, I feel like they take some of the nicest people and working for these call centers, you're going in thinking like, yay, I'm, I'm so excited to provide great customer service. But oh, you better be ready for some verbal abuse. Let's just go back to the beginning. So how did I end up in customer service? One, I did not know it was a customer service job. When a friend told me about this gig, we were out working at the Phoenix Open, TPC Golf Course in Scottsdale. Woo! We're out working at the, call, at the, at the uh, golf course, and she tells me about this travel agent job. And I was into it, so I contacted the recruiter and found out once I was in training, it was a call center, right? This, after two and a half years working there, and trust me, I literally wanted to quit every day, <laughs> especially at the beginning, but I'm surprised I survived two and a half years because I really wanted to, I was working on a project and I needed to stay there for that long. But here's those five reasons. The first one, rude customers. Number one, hands down. Like, you get people that will call you for help. Like, hello, so-and-so. Hi, how can I help you? You know, I'm. you called me. I'm, I'm going to ask to help you. And then they either think you're God. And then if you can't fix their problems, they go into a frenzy. Or they call in assuming that you know everything about their account when they logged in. So I worked for this financial institution who's, Name I'm not going to mention because I also am underneath an NDA. <laughs> but I worked for this institution and that's how some of the callers were. And you needed some of their account information at the outset of that call so you could assist the client. And we would get significant pushback. And then it's like, I kind of understood, but it was just like, well, how do you expect me to help you if I don't know? And the customers are like, well, I put it all into the phone. And that's another one of my complaints with working call centers is sometimes the person, like you think you're calling, putting in all this information to the automated system that it translates to the agent. It doesn't. And then you're connected now with an agent who did not get the information you input on the phone. And that led into a lot of frustrated, rude customers. Callback features. My job had this callback feature where it used to call everyone, no matter what your time zone was, 24 hours of the day. So we're waking, and I was on the West Coast, so we're waking up people on the East Coast at like midnight, 3 a.m., the wee hours of the night. And after expressing it to supervisors, our frustration, how we thought that was a risky plan and I didn't think it would work well, they didn't listen to us. And it kept going on until there was significant complaints that it, it started to lower our uh, client score, our client relationship score. So that's definitely number one, rude customers. Number two, the long hours. I already don't like being on the phone as it is. So I don't even know why I got this job. But the long hours, and I worked the graveyard shift, so it was overnight, so... Imagine my pain, having to adjust your lifestyle because I'm in school. So having to adjust my lifestyle to working at night and my shifts were 11 hours. So I went in from 
8 or sometimes 12 hours because I, I went in for 8.30 p.m. So usually 8.15, 8.20, I'm already logging onto the computer. I would not get off sometimes till 7.30, almost 8 a.m. the following morning. So those long overnight hours were dreadful. <laughs> I did it for two years. I could not imagine taking that many calls. Like sometimes I would log in with 300 calls in the queue. Oh God, that was brutal. The third thing are the QA monitors. You are not taking calls. Okay. You're sitting there judging me off of the script or off of these, uh, these these things they used to put in here and say we used to have to meet like you always have to meet all your legalities so I always have to make sure you're getting all your disclaimers out and all the disclosures but then you also had to like follow the script or have empathetic speech and so much other things that they would look for I used to I felt like I was a great agent and enough dealing with some of these callers and QA used to piss me off so I don't know if you guys get the same but like the call monitors sometimes I felt like they were so petty to say they didn't take calls. So it's like, well, you get on the phone and let me rate you. Like, oh God, the QA monitors, I always had pushed back to them <laughs> all the time. They're like, do you dispute it? Yes. For the lack of support. So I worked overnight. So it's enough, there wasn't many supervisors or anybody available anyhow. And I felt like all the other people on tier two, because I was just a level one agent, I did not want that promotion to tier two. I kept turning it down because those are when you really get the escalated calls. And also those same people, the tier two people were also the same people who were to help you if you needed help as a frontline agent. And they used to have attitudes. I would understand because like they have all the other calls too, but also they would not help you or there was no one to call for help. So a lot of times we had an on-call supervisor. A lot of times there was no supervisor at all or anyone to help you or only one person, one person, guys, working to help us. So like that one person is responsible for like doing everything and, and taking care of everyone. Not the business. Also for help desk, because I was a travel agent. So if there was like major immediate issues with like air travel, something wrong with ticketing, and we could not find an appropriate person to fix it. Not only do you have a frustrated client who already called frantic and frustrated because something happened with their flight, and it's always our fault, guys. In air travel, no matter if it's their flight was canceled, it was delayed, the airlines changed something, or it's weather, inclement weather doesn't allow them to fly. No matter what it was, they're calling the travel agency like, it's your guys' fault. You need to fix it and fix it now. Okay? I was so sick of that. And I don't love, like, being abused by people. So the verbal abuse for me is really what done it. When I was just like, oh, my God. Like, these people are abusive, but you need my help. Crickets. Like, you're calling me for help, screaming, hollering, and yelling, but you expect me to help you. And the last final thing, guys, because I'm trying to keep this video under 10 minutes. So the final thing that really caused me to quit that travel center job and why I hate working customer service was it led me to having a depression because of the verbal abuse and just the time hours. I worked 11 hours overnight. I was in school. I was busy. It was also the middle of the pandemic. So we were in lockdown. It was quarantine. I really couldn't go anywhere. I really didn't have any friends. And then I moved twice to different states and it still had me underneath the depression. Like it didn't get better. The job was really taking a beating on me. And it also led me having really bad phone anxiety. So like even when I wasn't at work, I was always afraid of the phone was going to ring or I didn't want to answer the phone. And it, it led me always having anxiety to where I was having anxiety attacks because I would just sit there anticipating the phone to ring. And then not only do you anticipate the phone to ring, when the phone rings, you automatically just expect it to be something bad. So you're like, oh God, I don't want it to ring because when it does, it's going to be someone mean to me, someone abusive, someone who expects me to do everything. And I also have to be careful how I respond because I'm on a recording and QA is listening and they can pull that call. So then it's affecting my job. It's affecting me mentally. It was affecting me physically. And that literally is why I quit. So 
those five reasons, guys, were reasons why I quit working customer service. I would not ever do that again. And I really don't recommend people doing it. If, if you are able to, and I feel like I have really thick skin. So I feel like two and a half years was a long time to, to stick through, to stick through it. I just feel like you need really thick skin because you get told a lot of things. Like I have a very soft voice, right? You should hear some of the things I got told over the phone. And um, so you have to deal with a lot of verbal abuse. Uh, it, it comes not only from the clients. I feel like it also comes from QA monitors and also from your supervisor because they always expect you to improve and expect you to do better on each phone call and each interaction are different. So the rude customers, the long hours, the QA monitors and their unrealistic expectations, I would say, the lack of support and then phone, phone anxiety and depression were all reasons why I hate working customer service and call centers. I would not do it again. And the only thing that got me doing that job was I didn't know. And by the time I knew I was already in training, learned, wait, it's, it's this type of travel agent <laughs> working for financial institutions. Okay, guys. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave in the comment section. If you're working customer service, if you're working a call center, please share with me your experience. I'll continue this video into another video and we can talk about it. If you worked customer service, if you were thinking about working customer service, if you're stuck in a customer service job that you really want to let go, hang in there. Eventually you'll get out of it. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Please leave the video a like and subscribe. So that way I can make more videos like this and I'll see you around. Thank you guys so much for watching.